Hi, welcome back to Canterbury Cottage. I am Sherry and today I have so many great ideas for you on how you can decorate your walls on the cheap using nothing but thrifted items. And I'm going to share with you how I've used every single one of these ideas in my own home. But before we get started, uh, I have something that I want you to do. So most of you know that I resell the home decor that I make at a local retail store. But sometimes if I really love something, I will keep it for myself. Well, out of all the projects that I upcycle in today's video, I decided to keep just one. And so what I would like you to do while you're watching the video today is to think about which of the projects you would have kept for yourself. And then I'll check back in with you at the end of this video. Okay, let's get started. I'm at my local Goodwill focusing on wall decor and honestly the selection is not that great today. I am drawn to one picture of a girl and a cat in a window. I also like the large frame of the picture next to it and decide that I could combine the two. I really like this soft floral painting but the frame is absolutely hideous. I think this flower metal wall sconce is cute and this large wood carved piece will definitely be coming home with me. Although I could have easily just ripped off the brown paper on the back of the frame, I decided I wanted to reuse it and so I pried off the staples and removed the hanging hardware. And then I carefully peeled off the backing paper. I bent back the staples that were holding the cardboard in place, removed the cardboard, the mat, and the print. I pitched the print, but I saved the mat to reuse. I then repeated the process on the other frame removing the print and double checking to make sure that it would fit properly in the larger, nicer frame. I thoroughly cleaned the frame and then I propped up the corners with scraps of wood so that I could paint the edges easier. I used two coats of Waverly chalk paint. Once the paint was dry, I distressed the edges using medium grit sandpaper. I then applied a coat of paste wax to seal and protect the chalk paint. I followed the clear wax with a coat of antiquing wax to give the frame an aged appearance and to make the edge details stand out. After applying a little antiquing wax, I use a rag to wipe most of it away. Now I'm ready for the fun part. I return the mat to the frame and then put in the print from the cheaper frame. I replace the piece of cardboard, bending down the staples to hold it in place. Although I could cut a new piece of craft paper for the back of the frame, it's just easier and cheaper to reapply the piece that was already there. Any good quality glue stick should do the job. For painting the ornate frame, I taped off the fabric mat and the canvas. I still painted very carefully because I did not want the paint to seep under the tape or to splatter on the canvas. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges and the detailing with some medium grit sandpaper. Because I let the paint fully dry, the tape was stuck and was a little tedious to remove in some spots. A little paint seeped under the tape onto the canvas, but I was able to remove it with some good cleaner. 
As always, I sealed the chalk paint with a coat of clear wax. I updated this piece of thrifted metal wall decor by cutting off the leaves and gluing on wood slices. I painted and distressed this piece of Tuscan wall art and I'm using it as a fire screen. I updated these thrifted metal sconces by replacing the candles with succulents and attaching them to vintage tin tiles. To do something similar with this metal sconce, I would need to grind off the spike intended to hold the candle. I painted it with three coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint, lightly distressed it with coarse sandpaper, and then applied a protective coat of clear wax. I had previously purchased this sign at Goodwill. I pried off the top part with the words and then I sanded and waxed the wood backing. To attach the metal piece to the wood, I used two screws through the hangers that were already attached to the back of the sconce. I put some greenery in an old salt shaker and attached it to the sconce using E6000 and hot glue. I love using empty frames. I feel they add personality and architectural interest. You can also tack things on the wall inside them that are easy to change out with the seasons. Sometimes put real flowers in these jars. I think real architectural salvage adds a great deal of charm, especially to a newer home. Lean large pieces against the wall or you can hang them on the wall, or you can reconstruct them by adding a piece of wood to create a shelf on which you can display other things. I love a good cutting board display on a kitchen wall. Unfortunately, I don't have much wall space in my kitchen, so I have a few boards displayed on the side of my refrigerator and then a few more behind my stove. I realize a gallery wall is not a new idea, but you may never have thought about creating a gallery wall using only thrifted art. In my stairwell, I created a display of tree photography. Every photo, every frame was thrifted. In my dining room, I have a large gallery wall of vintage bird and butterfly art. In my bedroom, I have a small collection of blue and white art. With the growing popularity of cottage core and granny chic decor, you're going to be seeing plates used a lot more in home decoration. And the great thing about plates is that you can pick them up for a buck or two at any thrift store and then easily change them out. Another fun idea is to frame things that are not actual artwork, like a piece of fabric or sentimental objects. Here I framed a 99 cent toy to give the appearance of an expensive antique. I decided to make use of the piece of wood that I had removed from the earlier piece. I had a small tapestry that I paid a couple bucks for and I glued it to the piece of wood using hot glue. I had some pretty wood trim that a sweet friend gave me that I cut four pieces of to create a frame. I attached the frame using wood glue and some small nails. Mirrors are easy to find at thrift stores. Sometimes they are beautiful just the way they are, and sometimes they need a little upcycling. I painted this mirror and added the little metal piece at the top. And I removed the mirror from this large lattice-like piece. This large wood piece looks pretty as it is, 
but I think it'll look even better with a little white paint. I spray painted first to get into the small design and then I followed it with two coats of chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed it with medium grit sandpaper. Thrift stores are always full of a variety of shelving options. These shelves were dark brown and black before I painted them. A small shelf with something unexpected on top can add a lot of personality. I attached used shelf brackets to a vintage book and then attached the brackets to the wall to create an unexpected bedside table. Well, that was a lot of ideas, wasn't it? I hope you're inspired to try at least one or two of them in your own home. Okay, did you remember to be thinking about which project that you would keep for yourself? Well, if you did, what I'd like you to do now is pause this video and in the comments down below, tell me which one you would keep. And then when you come back, I'll tell you which one I kept. Okay, so pause the video right now. Okay, I don't know if you paused or not, but I'm back. And hopefully you told me which one you would keep because I'm really curious. The one that I kept was the floral painting in the ornate frame. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.